<laughs> That's it, and then just walk to the back. Right, so we've had a look at placing gear and we've had a go at second in trad climbing. So what we're going to do now is look at how we build the belay at the top of the roots. So we're using all the same gear that we used before. And what we're going to start with is building a three point belay using the rope. All right, okay. so we've got some cracks here that we can use. So what we want to do is pick the gear off your harness that's best going to work in these cracks. So if we start here, yeah. um, we're looking at this sort of area because our climb's coming from over there. Mm -hmm. So we want all of our gear to point in that direction. So looking at these cracks, we can see we've got a really lovely tapered crack there. Mm -hmm. So that would be a really nice place to put a nut in. Yeah. So um, in fact, if I just borrow your big set of walnuts to start with, there's just a nice chance to... This one? Yes, that's one. Yeah. Mention something. So we looked at placing these the other day, but just thought something that we didn't do is um, just looking at how you can place a walnut. So what we can do with these is these can go in four different ways. So we can either place them in a crack that way or this way, mm -hmm. but as well as that, they can go that way and that way. Right. And it's because they taper in all four directions. So where it might not quite fit there, it might fit really nice if you just spin it round that way. And these little scoops in the nut can help it hug onto the rock. This crack here, um, I can fit my fingers in it. So okay. it's a sort of medium sized nut. And that's how I sort of will gauge what size nut I need. And you can have a look and you can have a guess. So well, I'd probably guess that it would be a number. Yeah, yeah, blue. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Go for it. Oh. Yeah, fab. Great. And you can have a look at it and be like, fab, we've got loads of rocked metal contact. It's seated in really securely and it's pointing in the right direction for our belay. Yeah. Fab. Cool. So that's okay. one piece. So what we need now, ideally, is two more. It's really nice to build a three-point anchor. Um, and there's a nice crack in here. So if you have a look in there, what piece of gear do you think would work best in that parallel crack? A cam? Yeah. Fab. Yeah. Great. So let's have a look at the cams. So, um, would great. Would the gold one work? Yeah, I think so. In fact, yeah. shall I just show you? I'll just show you one thing. Can I yeah. borrow... I'll borrow the red cam. Sure. Thank you. If you keep hold of the gold one, I think you're totally right with that. So now it's just a chance to look at um, a, a not optimum placement of a cam. So whereas when you are an optimum placement, we're looking for all four loaves to be touched in the middle. If you pull it too tight, we over cam it. Mm -hmm. And if it's too loose, it's under cammed. So the perfect placement in this crack here will be about there. So you can see the metal is touching the rock in about the middle of the lobes. Yeah. If I slide it down in here, can you see how it's too tight? So it's not able to open those lobes at all. Yeah. So that's overcome. So I've overcome that one. And then if we go up into here, you see there, it's sat right on the edges of its lobes. Mm. So that would be undercammed. And both of those are not ideal. So what we're looking for every time we're placing the cam is getting the middle of the... So a mistake that some novices make when they're climbing is they just pull that trigger bar all the way down, wham it to the back of a crack and it can get stuck because mm -hmm. it's over cammed and it's right at the back and it makes it really hard to remove that cam. So just when you're placing them to start with, take your time just to get the perfect placement. So you've chosen the big gold cam. I think that's a great choice. So have a go at placing it in that crack and see if you can okay. get a good cam placement. How's that? I think it's okay. Yeah, great. It's touching on... All three, four. but I would don't, I'm not happy with the last one. Yeah, should I have a look? Yeah. Do you think that's not so good? There you go. So all oh, I've yeah. done there is I've moved it a tiny bit further back. Okay. And it's just put it into a really nice position where it's sat touching. So you've done a really good job. We just moved it a tiny bit. Often those little adjustments are quite key with cams. Yeah. Um, great. And I reckon, did you think you could get another one in there? Cool. Yeah, happy yeah. with that? Yeah. Great, it's really nice when that happens, isn't yeah. it? It's just like, yes, yeah. good. Fab, yeah, I agree. All right, so we've got three placements. Mm -hmm. So I reckon that is enough to build our anchor. Now, it's sometimes people use two placements when they're building anchors. And that is when you've got two quite big, like really bomber bits of gear and you're so happy that they're safe yet that you're just happy with two. Most of the time, it's great to aim for three because then you've just got a bit of redundancy in your system and it's just super, super solid and safe. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So what we need to do now is attach them all together to create our actual belay. Mm -hmm. 
So what we need is if you get three screw gate and using the smaller ones, we'll get a screw gate on each of these bits of gear. Great, so we're gonna pop some screw gates on here. Now people don't always use screw gates when they're connecting their anchors together. And it's just because if that's hung in midair, then the argument is that it's, it's not gonna come undone. But if there's any chance that it could come undone, whether it's knocking on the rock, whether there's ropes in the way, we're gonna put a screw gate there. Personally, I'll always default to a screw gate because I might as well be safe. Yeah. All right, okay. fab, so if you pop a screw gate in both of those. Great. All right, so we've got a few bits of gear ready to go. And what we're going to do to start with is we've got a single rope and we're going to use the rope to build our belay. Now you can use slings to build the belay, which is what we looked at yesterday, um, but we also use ropes as well. So we're going to start with a rope and then we'll build on to using slings later. Okay. So what we need is you need one of those big HMS carabiners on your harness. If you pop that on the rope loop of your harness, great. And what we're going to do here is a method that people call clip and clove hitch to build their belay. Mm -hmm. And it, it really is as simple as that. So the first thing we need to do is say, right, where are we going to belay from? That's what we need to know. So in this case here, our climbers are coming from that way. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stand here and belay because they're coming from just down here. Okay. Right? And what we do is we simply clip the rope through that screw gate. Yep. So we've got our rope clipped through there. And what we need to now to do now is clove hitch onto this HMS here. Um, do you know how to tie a clove hitch already? Uh, no, I don't. Nope. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is I'll show you. So if I borrow this. So to tie a clove hitch, we take a loop of the rope here. And the way that I do it is I go here as if, almost as if you've got a book. And you're closing it left to right and it makes a loop. Picking up another bit of rope, left to right, and makes another loop. Now these two loops here, can you see the tail of the ropes out the back on one and on the front on the other? Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we put the right one in front of the left one. Yeah. And then we've got, you can see the knot there. And then that, you then clip both strands of that through the HMS here. And what that's done is it's made an adjustable knot. So can you see the middle of the clove hitch? Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, so we want this to be tighter. So to do that, we put a finger through the middle there. So if I go in there, you can see. I pull the middle and then pull this end to make the other one tighter. If I want it tighter again, pull the middle. So it's almost like a little pulley system. And that's tight on you there. So I'm give those ends a tug and then that's sat in there. So what you need to do now is come and clip the tail of your rope through this one here. That's it. So just through the screw gate and screw that screw gate up because we're not going to go back oh, to yeah. it. Great, and then go back and stand where you're going to belay. And then repeat that process. And then when you've got the middle, so you pull that that way. Okay. So if you pull it up with your thumb, that's it. And then pull the tail. Great, and then that's, that's pretty good. So we've got these are nice, equally as tight. All right, so we've got two in. So to get to the last bit of gear, we're going to repeat the same again. So clip up onto this one. That's it, and leaving that screwed up. Perfect, and then going back to stand where you would stand. So just here, this shadow HMS is ideal for the situation. Because of the wide and deep basket at the top, we can fit three clove features in. A lot of other screw gates are smaller, and you can only fit two clove features, and then you need another screw gate to fit that last one in. Okay, so go for it. So if we pop our third clove hitch in there, then we'll be good to go. Lovely. Yeah, great, snug it up. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. What we've got now to go through it is we've built what's called like an ideal, an ideal belay. And it's fitting a certain criteria. So each of these pieces of gear are independent. So should one fail, the others are still strong. So for example, if that green cam for some reason came out, mm -hmm. can you see that you don't go anywhere? Yeah. So they're independent of the system. If it were all connected, everything would slide around. So I'll just pop that back in. There you go, so you can go back there. So they're independent. They're all pointing in the right direction because our climb is coming from that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so independent and directional. They're all equally as tight. So there's an equal load on each one. If you imagine that this one was really loose and these are really tight, none of the load would be going through that nut and it will be all coming through here. So having an equally tight sling or rope to build your belay is really important. Mm -hmm. okay? And the last thing is this angle that we've got here, so this sort of arrow that's created in our belay, whatever type of belay we build, we end up with one of these arrows. Mm -hmm. Whether it's slings or ropes, they all come together in this arrowhead here. Mm -hmm. And this needs to be within 90 degrees. Most people can get 90 degrees between their finger and thumb there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so if you were to look at it here and it was over that, then yeah. it would be too big. And what that does is because it cross loads things, so it pulls the load from the side rather than in front of us. So we've built our belay. So if we had climbed up this route, we'd now need to bring our second up. At the moment, you would still be on belay. So whilst you're building your anchor, they keep you on belay to keep you safe. So what we need to do is let them know that you're safe. So um, this is when you would shout down to your second that you're safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then they take you off belay and go off belay. So you know now that the, rope, the slack is in the rope. So what we do is we need to pull this up. And what I'll do is if you take it and you do it, your braking hand is going to be this one here, the one yeah. that comes back up towards the belay as the climber comes from there. So as you take the slack in, take it up and over your harness and the ropes and pile it on the other side because that's where you'll be anyway. So if you go for okay. that, so pull all the slack in until it comes tight on your climber. That's it. Fab. And then just, just pull it, pull it all. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So find your belay plate. Great. And when we're belaying from the top of a trad loop, route, we clip through the rope loop of our harness, not the belay loop. Okay. Right? For reasons that we'll explore later. All right, great. And what you want is the, with your belay plate here, so you've got it the right way around, so the teeth of the belay plate are going to be pointing back up towards your anchor because that's matching your braking arm. Yeah. Cool. So your climber's ready, so you can pop them on belay. Perfect. That's lovely. Nice, so you've done a bit of a funny thing there, so have a look at your belay plate. So can you see how you've not clipped oh, the yeah. belay plate? Oh, so yeah. that's all right, just okay. unclip it again. And yeah, so, so screw it up. And just make sure you check. So once I've got them on belay, before I tell them, I do a little check. So if I grab it a sec, is that all right? Yeah. And I pull the system tight. So I go, right, if my system comes tight, yeah, there you go. I thought it was backwards. That's the wrong way around. So those grooves are pointing towards you, whereas we want them to be coming this way. Oh, so okay. if we take that out, so it's coming from the climber. And then if we clip that on there, so can you see there now? Right. If we pull that tight and if our system's weighted, then your braking hand is in the right place. Okay. Happy? Yeah. So that's there. All right, great. So now your climber can climb. So can you remember the climbing call for letting someone know that it's time to climb? Um, no, it's no. all right. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. So you can say, um, you can say right, on belay, climb and ready. And just whoever you're climbing with, just make sure you use their name. Yeah. So if you're climbing with me, you'd be like, Alice, on belay, climb and ready. And then I'd set off. Okay. All right, great. So last thing that we need to do is how do we belay from the top? Okay? Yeah. So belaying from the top is very much like belaying when you're at an indoor wall and you're taken in. Because that's what you're doing. As the climber comes up towards you, slack is introduced in the system and you're taking that slack in. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to do is just show you the best way to do it. Okay. Okay? So if I take control a sec, so it's short, sharp motions. And I want to keep this loaded this way. Mm -hmm. So I don't want that sliding around everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it here. And I'm going up and back and then crossing my hands over. Up and back, crossing my hands over. So then if the climber weights the system at any point, it's just going to pull it that way. Right. Whereas if I'm belaying a bit like this over here and the climber weights the system, you've got quite a big shock load there coming through your anchor. Okay. All right. So we're aiming to keep it here and short, sharp motions and crossing over at the back. But can you see how the action is the same yeah. as taking in anywhere else? Great. Go for it. So you have another go. And it's one of those things that just with practice becomes a really smooth process. Yeah. That looks better already. Cool. Great. And now just a little tip to be a nice bee layer. So if I had my climber on the end there, mm -hmm. what I tend to do is I'll take it in and just there, the ropes come tight on the climber. And to check if I need to take any more slack in, I take this hand and I just put a bend in the rope. So if I can bend it, it means there's slack, so I might take a bit more in. If I can't bend it and it's a bit hard, it's already tight on them, I don't need to haul them up the crag. So I just go, ah, it's all right for a bit, and I'll wait until it comes loose. Check again and go, okay, they've moved up a bit. I'll have to carry on from there. And that's just, it means that they have a nice time too, basically. Just to summarise and recap that little bit, once you've built your belay and you're ready for your climber to come up, you let them know that 
you're safe, now you can take your filet, pull all of the rope and put it up and over your harness like you have there and drop it on the other side. Once it comes tight on them, drop a little bit so they don't start climbing. Pop them on belay. Make sure your belay plate breaks, the grooves in it are pointing back towards your anchor and then let them know that they're ready to climb so they can climb when ready and then belay. All right, yeah. so before we leave this belay entirely, we've dismantled the rope. I just want to really quickly show you another way of building belays. So just then we used a single rope to build a roped belay. I just want to show you building a belay with a sling instead. So have you got a big 240 sling on your harness somewhere? Yeah. Great. So some people really like this way of building by anchors in trad climbing because it's super simple and it can be nice and quick. So opening out this sling, it is a 240 because it is 240 if you straighten it out, 240 centimetres. We just take it, clip it through here, fumble, there you go, screw that one up and just carry the sling around, clip it through here, screw it up and continuing over, clip it through the last one and screw it up. So at the moment, it's just running through all of our anchor points. If we use that, can you see how they're not independent? Mm. So yeah. to make them independent, we take the sling from here and the sling from between these two and pull it all to one point. So can you see now that we've got the sling going to each bit? This tape is annoying, it's always in the way. Slide it up to somewhere so it's not in your knot because we don't want the, the knot, this sewn bit of the sling in the knot. Yeah. All right. So then we go, right, which way is our climb coming from? That way. To make them independent, we need a knot in this sling. So I tend to take the rope sling here, pop an overhand knot in it. I think the sling is... So like that. Um, and then what we've got here is made each of these independent. What we have got in this particular example is, can you remember we were talking about this angle, we wanted it less than 90 degrees? Yeah. It's pretty much bang on 90 degrees, so it's right at the limit of what this sling can do. What we'll look at later is ways you can use the sling more efficiently okay. to have a longer length. And what you could do as well if you wanted to, is you could lengthen out the slings of the cams. There's lots of ways you can bring it a bit further down. Okay. Alternatively, you could use multiple slings. Mm -hmm. In this case, we just use one. So once we've done that, we've built what we call a single point anchor. So then this point here is our belay. Right. Like Happy? Yeah. Cool. So we've got our belay built. Mm -hmm. So we've, bought a, we've created a single point anchor here. Now what we don't do when we've built a sling belay is clip directly into our harness because we've got no shock absorbance in the system. So we use the rope to add a bit of stretch into it. Okay, so if we can reach this from where we're going to be stood or sat to belay, you can clip your clove hitch straight in. So you would take your rope here, and this is just a one-handed way of tying a clove hitch, but you can clip that clove hitch in like that, and you'd be stood a bit more in line here. So if okay. you just take a step forward, okay. that's it. And then what you can do is you can adjust this clove hitch to be as tight as you need it to be. So if you wanted it a little tighter, you could pull that in. That's it, and adjust there. And you want to make sure you're in line with your belay. So what you'd actually do here, can you see how you would need to be stood one step yeah. further forward? That's it, so then everything's in line. Okay. Happy? Yeah. So if you can't reach this, so if it's out of reach, what we do is we don't put the clove hitch here because we need to be able to adjust our clove hitch from where we are. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to go and sit back on an edge a little bit away, then we take this one off. So if you lean forward a sec, mm -hmm. And we go back to that clip and clove hitch that we did before. So we'd clip through here yeah. and screw it up. And we put the clove hitch on our belay loop here. Okay. So if you pop it through the rope loop, yeah, yeah. that's it. And then you clove hitch that one onto your HMS. <laughs> Perfect. Nice one. That's it. So cool. screw, the, screw the HMS up to start okay. with. And now what you can do is you can adjust your system to be where you need to be. So even if you needed to go three metres back, mm -hmm. you could just keep letting slack out of that clove hitch to get yourself to where you need to be. What's important with this and what's really nice is if a 
often the edge of a rock climbing crag is quite steep. Mm -hmm. So you want to protect yourself. So I always clip myself on before I'm near the edge. I adjust it to let out slack to get me to the edge, but keeping me safe. So at no point am I unattached near the edge. Right. Great. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So do you want to just have a quick go at letting slack out and moving backwards there? Yeah. That's it. So take the middle of the clove hitch. That's right. Is that right? Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, so what I do is keep that rope there. Yeah. And oh, I see. then you can see the middle more easily. Yeah, it's yeah. in there and you can get something in and then you can take yeah. slack out as easy as that way. Okay. That's okay. it. Okay. So that bit. Middle, yeah, and then pull this one. Yeah, perfect. That'll do. Yes, there you go. And you okay. can keep moving backwards then. So then you can adjust it to be wherever you need to. Okay. Great. That'll do, yeah. Yeah. And then when you, were, when you are where you want to be, just tighten up your clove hitch. Okay. Great. Fab. And you can see then why we left all of these already screwed up. So yeah. you don't then need to come all the way back here to do that, to go all the way back there. Yeah. Great. So a benefit of this system is if your belay is quite a long way back from the edge of the crag, if you take your rope and you clip and you clove hitch and you clip and you clove hitch, you can use half a length of your rope. Yeah. Whereas this, we're just using one length out and back. So it's a really good way to be able to make the most of your rope. And especially if you've led quite a long pitch. So if your rope is 30 meters and your rope and your pitch was 20, mm -hmm. and you've only got 10 meters of rope to play with. So going out and back can quickly use up a lot of rope. Right. So that's more rope efficient. Right, so we're looking at building another belay here. Something that we didn't mention before was checking how solid the rock is. So it's really important if you're, when you're building your belay, checking that the rock that you're using is good. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to do is if there's anything at all that I might be a little bit dubious about, then I might put a hand on it here and I'll hit it with the base of the other one. I'm feeling and looking for any sort of vibration in the rock. That's not moving at all. It just is part of the mountain. So I'm happy with that. And I might do that here, you know, is that rock detached? Can't quite tell. Get a hand on, have a look. And I'll have a really good sort of look around and go, oh, actually, although this flake is here, this is part of the crag. So yeah. I'm happy with that. So I want to check the how solid my rock is. Great. So yeah, have a look in there, see what you think okay. will work. It's quite big, so I'll try a talk now. Oh, big old blue. Oh yeah, look at that. Look. Does that look okay? Yeah, so what do you think? Um, do I think it's got good contact on this side, but not as much on this side. Cool, and if you weight that, what will happen? Can it come out? No. No, so it can't come out. Is it facing the right direction? I think so, unless it could go the other way. Yeah, so it's so more by direction, I mean, like, is oh, um, see. Yeah, so it's pulling that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that looks really good to me because okay. we can't get, because of the sort of angular corners, a hex will never be touching every single bit right. of the rock. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got a really nice contact at the back and it's fitting in nicely here. Okay. And the sling's bringing us in the right direction. So that's yeah. a really good placement, okay. I think. Great, cool. so that's one. So let's right. find ourselves two more. And yeah, it's up to you. There might, you might be able to get another in this crack here. I don't know, oh, the back yeah. of it looks quite good, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So I might try. You're going to go for a nut or a cam? Or I might go for a nut. For a nut? Yeah, cool. I might try, I don't know, maybe a red one? Yeah, try red. See where see. you can get it in. Ooh. That worked? I think so. Yeah. Yeah? That looks good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so what I do is like you do oh, yeah. your yeah, so place them. Great. And what I tend to do when I do that those two tugs is keep an eye on the oh, nut. Right. So yeah. I can see if it's securely seating in, yeah. if it's moving at all. In that case it wasn't at all. Okay. Cool. So we've got two bits. And right. then what else? So let's get one more in. So yeah, so something that's Yeah, that bit looks good. Yeah, cool. I might go for a blue. Blue? Is it a bit smaller than the other yeah. one? How's that? Mm, try. Fiddly. A little bit more fiddly, fiddly. here. Oh. Yeah. I don't know actually. Yeah, great. So uh. trying it in both orientations works. Oh. Or maybe an offset actually. I'll try an offset. Yeah, great. So offsets can be super useful just when the like 
either side walnut's not quite right. Oh, that's quite good, I think. Yeah, cool. Do you want to have a look at that? Yeah, that'll be great. Do you think that's okay or not so good? No, that looks good to me. Yeah. So we've got a touching on all sides. Yeah. And it's a really nice use for an offset because it tapers at the back, that groove, mm. and it just seats in really nicely there. And oh, I'd yeah. still, what I'd do is come back down to here, I'd have a look, sometimes even keep keep a hand on oh, on the nut. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. And then that's, that's in nice and securely there. Great. Fab. Yeah, great. Nice choice. So we've got big blue torque nut, red nut, and a little blue offset. Cool. Amazing. So why don't, for this one, why don't you try bringing them all together with a sling yeah. rather than the rope that we did last okay. time? The 240. Yes, 240 is a really nice one when you've got three bits of gear. Okay. You just, what we're doing, what we've done here, we've got one more step we need to do. Oh, nice. carabiners. Yes, yeah, so I use that for one of them. Help me to hold that sling a sec. Yeah, sure. Nice. Okay, so we need, need someone to clip the sling to. And rotate them round the right way. Yes, so it just means you can access the screw, like yeah. the gate, nicely. That one's a bit tucked away. Amazing. There we go. Cool. Nice one. Okay. There you go. So we put them through all three. Yep, so clip it through them. And this one. Yep, perfect. Pulling them and then pull it all in. So your climb is coming from behind you there. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Having it all in that direction. Cool. That's it. And then I do an overhand. Yeah, so and make sure it's in, direction is important, not only that way, but also vertically. So here, because you're probably going to be sat on that oh, edge, right, yeah. what I do is I often crouch to take it totally in the right direction. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you can tie your knot. Okay. Screw gate Yeah, so any screw gate into there is fine. And then I can put in, I'll pop a shadow HMS into here. Yep, perfect, through your rope loop. And then I'm going to go from here, clipping in, and then... Oh. Great. Yep, so every time we're leaving a screw gate, we don't need to come back clipping on. So before you go to the edge, this is the safety oh. bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. That's good. So, yeah, so get your clove hitch in already. So then you're ready and safe before you start walking to right, an edge. got you. Yeah, that makes sense. It does make loads of sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to see the top of here. Yeah, you do. You also want to screw the HMS up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. So now you're going to where you want to be stood. Or in this case, I think we'll be sat. So, cool. So make sure you're comfy because you, you'll be, that's the way you'll be sat to belay. Yeah. Happy? Yep, I'm Great. comfy. Great, and then this is nice. Is that tight enough? Yep, that's quite tight. Cool. So what I tend to do to snug up my clove hitch, I either lean back to snug it up, or sometimes actually just shuffle forward half a foot more and it'll tighten up your belay on you. Okay. So in this case, you could probably just shuffle. Yeah, yeah nice. That's pretty tight. And then just make sure your HMS is screwed up. Yeah. Cool. Great. Right, sweet. Let's use safe. So this is when you let your mystical climber know that you are safe and they can okay. take your off belay. Right. Um, so let's assume we've done that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now is when you pull the slack of the rope in. Right, okay. That's it. And it looks nice too. Great. So for, for now, let's assume it's come tight on the climber because okay. we haven't got a climber, we've just built the belay yeah. at the top. So they've gone, that's me, Claire. Now what? Um, on belay. <laughs> Yeah, and then tell them to climb when ready. Okay, climb when ready. Yeah, good. So crossing over. Yeah. Nice one. Cool. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head down to the bottom of the crag and you're going to have a go at leading, but you are going to have a safety line on. It's like it was made for oh it. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. What a choice. <laughs> nice. 